Thank you, Chairman. I'm no um, great fan of the ABA process myself, um, but I can't help but note that colleagues on both sides of the aisle don't hesitate to herald the ABA process when it is supportive of a nominee that they would like to see get on the court. Um, it is when the ABA process is not supportive of a nominee that they would like to see get on the court that these uh, concerns emerge. Um, we Can have, I associate myself with that? <laughs> we have, uh, yes, you may associate yourself with that, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we've heard concerns that this letter is outrageous, that it is not supported with any sort of detail, that it has no apparent basis, that it create, cre sends personal aspersions, and that there's no way to evaluate the aspersions. We actually have something we could do about that. I've been on this committee a while. The ABA letters are always this way. They don't give you the underlying backup. But what we do have here is some pretty darned serious concerns. And to just laugh them off, I don't think is appropriate. I think we have a responsibility here. The assessment of interviewees was that Mr. Van Dyke is arrogant, lazy, an ideologue, and lacking in knowledge of the day-to-day -day practice, including procedural rules. There was a theme that the nominee lacks humility, has an entitlement temperament, does not have an open mind, and does not always have a commitment to being candid and truthful. There were reports that his preparation and performance were lacking in some cases in which he did not have a particular personal or political interest. We can resolve this by bringing in the ABA folks and letting them explain what the basis was for these charges, what cases they were talking about. We can do it in a private way because I think there are a lot of reasons why we respect the fact that people who are being asked to critique somebody who they may have to practice before want some degree of protection from subsequent judicial retaliation. So, yeah, I don't love the ABA thing either. But we do have a remedy for the concerns that the senators have expressed by bringing them in and trying to get to the bottom of this. Because just to gloss over concerns that have been publicly raised of this magnitude, I think, is a very bad um, precedent for us to set. Um, I would also say that um, I think there's something implicit in these proceedings that I'd like to elevate and make explicit. I think we are now at a point in which we are conceding that none of us, no senator here, has a claim on behalf of their state to any particular circuit court seat. We haven't said that, but the paucity of Mr. Van Dyke's connections to Nevada, not even joining the Nevada bar as a new lawyer when he got there, but waving in under the AG rule, I mean, there's very little signal that other than being the pro from Dover who was brought in to be a Solicitor General who had no connections to Nevada before and left after that with no sense connections to Nevada, I don't think any of us would be very happy about a circuit court seat that we claimed our state had an interest in, in which a president brought in somebody who had the scarce connections to the state that Mr. Van Dyke displays. So we can go over this more when we're debating the nominees, but right now I think we are right up against a precedent, and if we go over this precipice, I don't think any member of this committee has any claim, should the presidency chain change or should the chairmanship change, to come to the Democratic chairman, if there's a Democratic chairman, and say, I have a circuit court seat that is my home state seat, and I want to have my views about that seat recognized. I think you are forfeiting that today with this nominee, and I think we need to think long and hard about that, because this has been an important tradition, but the only thing that enforces that the Rhode Island seat on the First Circuit or the Utah seat on your circuit, or, you know, or go right down the line. The only thing that enforces that is, the home st is that we honor each other's home state blue slip. It's not in the law, it's not in the rule. 
It's that tradition. And if we're throwing that over the side for Mr. Van Dyke, please don't come back later. Please don't come back in another administration or in another majority and say, oh, now we're interested again in having a view about who should be on my home state's circuit court seat. Because as of this, there is no such thing any longer as our state's circuit court seat. We saw this in the Ninth Circuit with the uh, first um, candidate that uh, Senator Feinstein was so passionate about not really being from California. We see even more um, plainly here, and I think we just need to be candid with each other that we are now going over this precipice and there's no going back. This isn't a one-way street in which when it's a Republican president, the rules don't apply, but when it's a Democratic president or a Democratic majority, oh, we want these rules back again. No. When we go over this precipice, there's no return. Thank you, Senator Whitehouse. Uh, I think you made a very good suggestion about the ABA. We'll talk among ourselves about how to do that. Uh, you were a solicitor. Mr. General. Chairman? Yeah. Uh, Could I just add, if we're going to do that, I'd like also to have the opportunity to interview any of the dozens and dozens of people who have worked for or with Mr. Van Dyke right. who have only wonderful things to say about him and who say he's professional, he's unbiased, yeah. he is hardworking, and he's talented, he's think, qualified. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, I got that. But I think the point that Senator Whitehouse was making, they make some bold accusations like, what cases? <laughs> like, what was their basis? And I do think, I couldn't agree more, Senator Lee, that if we undertake such an effort. It needs to be done in a way that is absolutely yeah. fair to the nominee. Yeah. But it also needs to reflect the fact that if he's going to be on the court, there are a lot of people who are going to want sure. some degree of um, privacy about their views so that we not only have to respect the fairness to the nominee, but we have to respect fairness to the witnesses and not put them in a position in yeah. which, because they've critiqued Mr. Van Dyke and because their criticism is public, and if he's confirmed, now they're getting clobbered by him in court because they're on record as having uh, been against his nomination. That we have to protect against, too, and I have full confidence in the chairman to do this fairly. Yeah.